You just tuned in to the Tiger Toledo Show. This shit right here, Nick. Born up here of the events that we have going on. Um, Notary Agency Secrets, March 28th, Power of Attorney. Masterclass, April 4th, Black Box is going to be in May. Uh, the AI Crash Course for Notary Entrepreneurs, that's February 21st. If you guys don't have your tickets for that, you're slipping on your pimping. We already sold out of the early bird uh, tickets. That shit started moving fast. I, I ain't even going to lie to you. That started moving really, really fast. It surprised me how quickly people bought those tickets. First email I put out, that shit went. That shit was gone. Um, I closed deals that, with tech. That's going to be February 20th. The lock-in lockdown party with Don Velez and Kim Yanni. Uh, that's going to be March 11th. And I'm be releasing my book, uh, The 21 Commandments of Influence, May 11th. It's good to keep stuff like this around so you can stay on point with what you're doing. You know what I mean? Uh, very important that you have a board. That way you can track what you're doing. So, I, you know, my goal, my goal is road to $100,000 a day, baby. $100,000 a day, that is the goal. You heard? So there's a couple of new skills that I must... There's a few new skills that I must possess if I am going to reach that level. Oh, let me restart this. This garage band is bugging. Okay, there's a few skills that I must uh, obtain, right? This is one of them. Pattern recognition. Listen, we live in a new era with new times with new technology like they're, they're not even calling this shit ai anymore they're calling it generational ai at this point this is this is me and dawn was was chopping it up earlier and um she sent me a uh article about disney is about to lay off seven thousand people and they're about to free up 5.5 billion dollars right but just so you know your boy your boy ain't on that foo-foo shit Come on, man. I, I, I'm not going to steer my, my people's wrong. I will not. Let me pull it up for you. Let me pull it up for you. This skill right here is extremely important right now. And I am now conditioning myself to understand it and understand it more. Uh because I'm, I'm realizing how valuable it is. I'm gonna close all my pages. Anyway, um, I'm gonna pull it up for you so you guys can see. Pattern recognition is basically you are pushing so much value or you're, you've, getting, you've gotten enough responses from people, from uh, Hold on, hold on, yeah, I'm, I'm a little... I'm not a multitasker. I'm going to let you know early. I don't multitask. For those that multitask, more power to you. Me? Nope. I'm a... Let me concentrate on one thing, get it done. <laughs> then once it's done, I'll concentrate on something else. All right, so let me pull up the paper. Let me pull up the paper. Okay, right here. This is today's paper, y'all. <clears throat> I ain't gonna bullshit y'all. Disney to trim billions, cut 7,000 positions. So they're actually giving the positions back over to the creators, the content executives. It's right here. Just so you know, your creativity is needed more than ever. More than ever. CEO Bob Iger, Robert Iger, however you want to call him, he took over because the CEO before him was, was running some bullshit. He was running stupid-ass plays, costing Disney billions of dollars, especially with Disney Plus streaming and everything. 
So now he, they was like, yo, you got to come out of retirement, B. Yo, we, <laughs> you got to come out of retirement. We about to fire this nigga. This nigga's fucking up the bread. He's, the block, the block ain't eating no more, man. Like, you remember that shit? Like, on Pay the Full? Niggas ain't eating. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, they got rid of the other guy. His name was Bob uh, Chapez or some shit. And they brung Bob Iger out of retirement and he started making huge cuts. So these cuts look like this, right? 7,000 positions. And he's shifting everything over to the content creators, the creative people of Disney. He's not shifting it over to operations. He's not shipping it over to administrations. He's not ship, shipping it over to uh, customer service. He's shifting it over to the creative people on the planet in their group. Very important to know that if the top CEOs of the biggest companies are doing that, pay attention. Pay attention. Pattern recognition. Pattern recognition. All right? So, this is just the front page, y'all. And then right here in the front page, wham! Block out. Google's new AI features fuel race with Microsoft. I'm trying to put y'all on game if y'all don't get my crash course AI for notary entrepreneurs. Don't blame nobody but yourself. I'm the first nigga to bring this shit to the notary industry. Yeah, I said it. I said nigga. I'm conscious, but I still use the word nigga. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Come on in here. Y'all think it's a joke. Y'all think this is a joke? No. Oh, listen, America hasn't seen this level of layoffs since 1969. Since 1969. The same thing, you know, Joe. You think you go come in here unprepared? You think they're going to be running plays on you and you see it in broad daylight and you ain't going to clap back at all? Come on, damn. That's not how we move. Y'all know that. What up? Hmm? What up? It's great, By the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nah, man. I, I, I have a, a duty. I have a responsibility to keep my people's abreast. Like, you know what hip-hop stands for. Where every day I say, you know, I'm your humble hip-hop sales coach. I'm not a damn rapper, you guys. Hip-hop is the acronym for higher infinite power healing our people. I have a sworn duty to put my people's onto game. So second page real quick. Y'all see this? Hold on. I think this shit is a joke. The AI race forcing Google into an unusual positioning of playing catch up. You know why? Because this is what just happened Tuesday. All right, today is Thursday. It just happened on Tuesday. This is what just happened. In New York, we like to say bing bong. Well, Microsoft decided to roll out bing, right? Because here's the thing. Uh, uh, Google owns 90% market share when it comes to search engines. 90 percent this is damn near a monopoly they have a monopoly on on search engines right now see you may think of google like hey i just search things but no it's it's really much greater and much bigger than that because google is able to sell other products because they 
own 90% of the search engines, right? So what happens is, is that you say, you know what? I want to get a Gmail now instead of a Hotmail. I want to put my business on Google profile versus Yahoo or Bing profile. You guys are saying, like they're, 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 they're introducing new products to you because they occupy a large percentage in your brain when it comes to search engines. Then they roll out up something like YouTube. Everywhere you turn around, Google it. Is there? Oh, you're running low on uh, <laughs> you're running low on storage. Buy some more Google this. Look, I even have a Google Google Docs, right? Like Google Ads. These niggas is just all over my shit, just selling me a bunch of shit, dude. So Microsoft is like, yo, we have to move on this. So as of Tuesday. They just wrote, pulled out open AI, chat GPT into bing, 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 bong. Look what it says now. Bing never had this. You see what it says? Tech. Ask me anything. <laughs> Ask me anything, nigga. <laughs> anything. <laughs> Yo, Google is on red alert right now. They announced it. It's in the paper. They are in red alert. They said, nigga, our jobs may be in jeopardy right now. Everything we've built may be in jeopardy right now. Go ahead. Tech, ask it something, brother. I'm going to hit the microphone. Just ask it something. How much is concrete in China? Uh, pull it up. How much is concrete? You didn't get the China part. But look, Google ain't doing that. Not on that level. Not at all. Let's run that back. Let, let, let's see. How much is concrete in China? I must have said it too fast. But they just rolled this out on Tuesday, y'all. On Tuesday, they just added this. How much is concrete in China? Boom. Yeah. Yeah. I got one more question for it. All right. Let me run that back. Notary in Oakland. Boom. There you go, brother. That's you. Your boy. And actually, three of those are mine because I work with Aisha and I work with Legal Dots, affordable notary. <laughs> So you heard I'm everywhere. Everywhere. Don, I keep trying to bring you in, Don. It, 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 for some reason, it's not letting it happen. I don't know why. Oh, there it is. Boom! Go squat in the building. Hey! Whoop, whoop. <laughs> That's an awesome listing there, Tech. Yeah, I mean. You can be everywhere, too. Yes. This is serious, y'all. This is serious, man. It, it even put, it says Google, Microsoft, Square Off. Like, they got boxing gloves. Wow. Up. Let's go. Let's go. Who wants, who, who's buying tickets to the fight? Wow. Yeah. I want to yeah. ringside. Wow. When two big juggernaut companies like that fight off, Oh, it's serious. Yeah. Man up. Woman up. Let's see. 
It's really? cool that somebody said you got ninety percent. You can't have all that. We come and yeah, that's way too much. And 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 if you remember uh, when Microsoft came out, Microsoft was a monopoly in the computer game for a long time. They had to go through Congress and everything. They were like, yo, you got to break this up. You got to break this up. Because they were, not every place had their, their, their chip, their whatever it was, they took over. So they're very comfortable with trying to take over certain industries and sectors. <laughs> Look, we have, we used to have NBC. Now we have MSNBC. That's Microsoft. Right. Right. Wow. Let's not let's not sleep on these cats. These cats ain't playing no game. <laughs> Don, how, how are you doing today, Queen? I'm great. I'm great. I was gonna try to fix my hair, but I was like, forget it. I'm just gonna throw it in a cup so I can hop in here. <laughs> That's right. Keep it all, all the way from. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm doing great. I'm looking forward to this event on the 11th of March. Yes. That is the talk. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the lock-in. Okay. Hey, okay, cool, cool, cool. So we have you, the one and only, um, head of the estate planning section, power of attorney. Um, if you guys are considering any of these that I'm about to list off for your business, you need to be in the building. All right. So we've got Lenny Rao. Lenny Rao is a Google My Business expert. He is, um, if you want to know literally anything regarding Google, um, I was on his clubhouse this morning and he was talking about the changes and everything, including the AI that you had spoke to us about earlier, uh, Tiger, and saying how they're making changes to the platform. Um, He informed us, just kind of a sidebar here, that if you already don't have a Google My Business page, they're switching over to a paid platform. Anyone who already has it, you're grandfathered in, but they're doing some sort of tweaks to where it's no longer going to be like a free thing for, for, for people, he said. So anyways, he is a Google My Business expert. He's going to be in the building. Um, we have Kim Yanni. Uh, we have Kim, rather, Kimberly of Kim Yanni Professional Services. She's going to be talking about business credit. Um, from the start to the end in terms of how you can begin to qualify for business credit, different areas. She has a great program. And then we also have Grizel, She Boss. She Boss is Miss Loan Signing, okay? That's my title for her. She's going to be in the building for those that are interested in doing loan signings with different creative ways for that. This is all going to be on March 11th at 10 a.m. Eastern. I'm going to do an apostille overview. Um, it'll be sort of a pre, um, I don't know the word I'm looking for, sort of an introduction um, to a beginner's apostille class that I'll be rolling out here in April. So literally any of these things that you want to add on to your business to be able to scale, to be able to pivot, um, to generate more revenue, this is the spot. March 11th, guys, hit me in my DM if you want to get registered. Yes, indeed. Or you can scan that QR code. Some of you guys are most likely on your phone now. Yes. Use that dealer phone that you got on the side. I know y'all niggas got some of them drug dealer phones. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Get that flip phone out and scan that code and then go over to Eventbrite and get that ticket. (laughs) (laughs) You know these cats be having... We black people, we got like two, three phones. <laughs> I got two phones, one for the hood. No, we don't, Tiger. We have one phone. <laughs> yeah, and you got your business phone where you... And then you got your cell phone. Stop it, dog. I'm telling you. <laughs> we all cooking it in the pot right now. Tech, tech. Talk about what we got. This is right around the corner, brother. February 20th. What's going on? Yeah, the fact that you brought up the whole automation and the AI and Google competing with Microsoft and Microsoft not backing down with that hooks them. Yo, and, but you made an interesting point about how you got Google ads, you have Google Docs, Google Forms. They're everywhere in your life. They're everywhere. For a long time, they've occupied that space. I thought that was such a, it's, that's a, such an intriguing point because at some point, 
shit shifts, it changes, and you adapt. And what Microsoft did by integrating the voice aspect, just look how, I just asked the price of China, the price of concrete in China, and then it spits out an answer, Google's not doing it. I like that. And then you mix that in with uh, Disney and the changes that they make, look at that. You have that, that creativity, that control, you have that. You really do. Mm-hmm. Think about this. I just asked it to look up a notary in Oakland, and it found me. It really did. It, somebody's going to use that. Like, that's new. And, and, and not only is it new, but it's now. It's like right now. Yeah. What do you, do you think about how the the ability to just because somebody if, if in your town believe me somebody's looking for a note believe me <laughs> all right and and whether it's remote whether it's in person or whether you gotta drive to the corner store they're looking for a note mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. are you a notary and mm-hmm. If if at any point it became uh it became confusing whether or not you could you know do this because you can't really find appointments it's not as booked as you are. Here's the thing: the robot just found me. <laughs> like, yeah. If you're looking for a notary, you're gonna find it. But well, where are you? Where are you? Those responses of the five that came up three of them were me I was like if my goal is if anybody and again you can do this my goal bro this shit is new if you look, think if you need a notary at some point you're gonna find me because it's gonna hit you at the last minute that this is how your customers are behaving your customers are going to your customers already use Google for a long time. This is already embedded. Now they're going to start using Microsoft because now they can talk. Chat GPT and the automation, that automation is going to take a lot of people by surprise. Don't let it take you by surprise. You're already doing this shit. Customers are going to want to do this. They are. They, bro, not, they, they're already doing it. You know what I'm saying? It's not whether or not you can do it remotely or whether you can do it in person or do it at the jail or do it at the, at the laundromat. Or do it in your 500 four square building. It's just, can you do it? So, for a long time, Google's been doing it, but Microsoft's like, fuck it, we can do it too. And Amazon has been doing it with Alexa. See, we, the way you can slide things under people's radar, under their noses, is you slowly induce them. Just like, that bag of IV when you're in the hospital and they're putting the IV into your arm. You see this huge bag with all this liquid in there and you're like, oh man, that's, <laughs> I don't know if I want that whole thing. But they administer it to you drop by drop. Next thing you know, you went through five bags of IV. And that's how they've been doing this with this AI. You guys been interacting with AI for a very, very long time. I had a- AI in my business at least four years ago, and that was with Call Joy, where I had the AI answering my phone calls for me, and it would be like, what would you like to do today? It was like, I'd like to get a power of attorney. No, no problem. Please hold. And it would, it would, the computer would talk back with the customer. Again, that was a, and that was a Google product, right? So, <laughs> um, it, 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 there is Alexa. And Google Home, these big computer juggernauts wanted to get into your home. They wanted to spy on you inside of your home. And they knew the only way they could do that is if they could create some cool little gadget like a extra for Google Home where it can spy in your, on your conversation. You guys see it all the time. You, we might be talking about something on the phone right now. Next thing you know, you jump off IG and it presented something, an ad yes. speaking about, you know, Home Depot, 
you know, garden hose. The more they can listen in on you, the more they can figure out. And it's not on some evil shit, to be honest with you, but they do want to get into your pockets. Yeah, it's they a effective market. They provide you the best products and services for what you're looking for. And the only way they can do that is if the closer they can have a relationship with your mind and your brain, the better it is. Oh, you're thinking about going to get Disney Plus so you can watch Wakanda Forever? Mm-hmm. Well, now you're going to see an ad pop up with Disney Plus Wakanda Forever. True. Is that evil? No. You was actually thinking that on your own. Yeah. You're looking for a notary. You were already look, actually. You weren't looking for a notary. You were actually, you were actually worried worried that because you have a client, you have a, your bills bonds, and you have a client. And the last two times this family drove three, three hours to help put a payment on their mother's books. You know, the down payment that they had to get this person out of jail. The last two times that happened, the the notary they canceled three hours before the appointment and you were stuck with an uh, unsatisfied client. And because you're a bill of man, you put up $240,000 to get this person and they might be a flight risk. So you put the, you make them sign a grand deed over to their house just in case you decide to leave the Guatemala model because you got bailed out of jail. So now we own your house. But here's the problem. I've been a bail bondsman, bail bondsman for 24 years. The quality of notaries and services and professionals have gone down. It's not reliable. And plus, a lot of people don't really do this full time, so they're not really available. I call them as unreliable. So the last two ladies I called, they canceled minutes before my client got here. I understand it's hard to find a notary. I understand it's people do it part time. They don't really take it serious. They mainly rely on loan signing. And they don't really understand how to get a client by simply being available. But you have to express that. Though. So that person, that Bell's mom's man, he's not just looking for a notary. He's looking for that experience. Don't let me down because I got $240,000 on the line. And this person needs to sign this grand deed at 2 o'clock on Saturday. Can you be there? Can you express that? You can do it automatically now. The robot can do it. We just demonstrated it. Client are looking for you. You have this power. You guys all have this power. You have it. You have it. Oh, uh, by the way, I just wanted to uh, share this as well. If you know, if you're sharing anybody's Netflix account, you you probably notice your ass got kicked out a couple of times. You pro- probably noticed that you got kicked out of your, your cousin's Netflix account. That that you've been borrowing for the last three years. Oh, shit. And you want to know why? <laughs> you want to know why? <laughs> because Netflix partnered up with Microsoft to offer ads. They're doing ad support, and they're going to offer a Netflix Plus, like Disney Plus, but they're going to make a lot of money with ads, which is supposed to bring in billions of dollars in their first year. So in order to do that, they're going to start kicking people off, which is supposed to, it started already, but it's really going to ramp up in March. So all you guys that are using uh, Nana's Netflix account, your ass is gone. (laughs) And guess guess who's going to be kicking you off? That goddamn AI, dude. Damn. (laughs) Netflix, down. Netflix did come back and post on their um, social media that sharing mm-hmm. is caring, and they were gonna mm-hmm. go ahead and allow people to. They were gonna re, they recanted their um, initial response to the password sharing. So supposedly they're gonna let it um, be allowed now. No, check this. Out. Today's paper. Ooh. That's today. Mm. I don't know because they realized they had I, I, I forgot how many numbers they had they had like they had a ridiculous I'm gonna just say like a hundred million uh-huh. right just to say a hundred million users but guess what only 
half of them were paying customers. <laughs> <laughs> so they were like losing billions of dollars. <laughs> but you know, like Disney Plus, they were able to do it. Um, a lot of other platforms, they're able to like limit the amount of like, hey, you can only share this on three devices. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's your problem if you got, you know. So <laughs> that's going to be interesting to see how Very. they roll that out. Very. Uh, captivated, captivated notary said, uh, ChatGPT is the own is only the first popular app. Bard is coming later yeah. this year. Well, I'll tell you this: is captivated. Google doesn't have much time to be rolling out BART. Mm -hmm. They need to roll that shit out like ASAP. And truth be told, they've been working on BART behind the scenes for a long time. For a long time. See, Google is really smart because what they did is they've been working out, they've been working on AI for so long. The reason why they didn't broadcast it or put it out there like that is because they knew people like Microsoft would try to uh, mimic and copy their shit. The same way a lot of notaries copy other notary shit. They was like, all right, this system seems to be working. Let's dissect it. Let's let's put the top engineers and break this thing all the way down and rebuild it up ourselves. So Google is very smart. They didn't do that, but they did not expect open AI to come out from left wing the way it did. Mm -hmm. Last month, open AI got 100 million subscribers. In history, there has been no software, no app, no Facebook, no MySpace, no nothing that have ever seen that type of value. Wow. This is this is like, it made history. They did and that in one the, month? In one month. Oh, it's it, it, it was like... They, that's why Microsoft said we're investing billions. Even <laughs> millions, we don't even need to see any more books. We like we we're gonna put billions wow. into you. Oh, wow. Mm -mm. Jeez. Man, <laughs> so I got a question for you guys. Surprise people, man. Don, let me ask you this: Does this scare you in any way? Or do you see it as a great opportunity? No, it doesn't scare me. It's definitely a great opportunity. It's a great opportunity to kind of fall into what tech and you have been saying all along. Automation is the way. And every day we're seeing more and more where automation is just popping up all over, all around us. Grocery stores, fast food, you name it. No, it's, it's not scary. It's just change. Change is always constant. What about you, Tech? Does uh, does this AI uh, raise any concerns for you? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, it's scary to think that how how many people will be caught by surprise of how quickly it moves. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna affect it's gonna wipe out a lot of people, man. Well, that part of it, mean, I, I understand as far as like what you're saying, wiping out jobs and, and that. Yeah, I, I hear that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, is the, that is the only thing I'm, I'm concerned about is because <clears throat> 20, what was it, 2020, right? 2020, or wait, when was uh, the pandemic? What year did it break out? Was it 2020 yes. or 2020? 2020. Okay. So during the pandemic, we never saw uh, this level of layoffs, right? We, we saw, and this was a crisis happening all around the United States, and we did not see this level of layoffs. Mm -hmm. Three mm -hmm. years later, AI gets introduced and I'm talking about companies are laying people off by thousands, 12,000 here, 7,000 here, 15,000 over here. I'm like, what is, I'm, 
I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen it. What's going on? So I'm 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 concerned for the people that um that are going to be affected that did not take the time out to you know they they just had their nose down and they're like they just did their the, their job the best way that they can and when you understand history you understand that hey look one of the biggest expenses employers have is labor costs. It, it takes up 70% of their profit and loss. That's their P&L, 70%. So for years, they've been trying to replace people. For years, I mean, decades, they've been trying to replace people. Though. They, they'll take the businesses out of the United States and they move it over, over to the Philippines and the Middle East because the American dollar would be able to stretch a lot longer and you can get um, more labor force for your American dollar. Now, they they have a way of replacing them and being more cost efficient. They're trying to get that 70% down as low as possible. No insurance. Uh, it doesn't require large locations anymore, warehousing, computers. So, I mean, when you, you could run the numbers up as much as you want, training, all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it as entrepreneurs, we have kind of a, a head start because if you're paying attention, which, you know, most of us are, I hope, yeah. then, you know, you, you are already making adjustments and, you know, changing with the tide. But for those people who, like you were saying, Tiger, are more reliant on just, you know, doing their job the best that they can and, you know, just making a, a regular living to get laid off. Everyone has to get creative, not just people that are business owners. Everyone has to get creative because while you're losing these jobs, simultaneously the prices of living are, are escalating. So it would be a pretty bad, bad mess. A Diamond Close deal said, I wish DC allowed Ron. Mm. Tech, you get gave me some interesting news about somebody that was using Ron for a long time. And Ron, for those that don't know, Ron did a major shift in their business model. Tech, you remember what we had talked about with the Ron? Yeah, I remember it. Break, break some of that down for, for our audience, bro. So... Wait, wait, you have a question. Before you go in, before you go in, DM Dawn so we can get you a ticket for the lock-in party. That is March 11th. Is going down March 11th. Lock-in party. Notaries, entrepreneurs are welcome. I close deal is February 20th. Me and Tech are going to be doing that. Me and Dawn are going to be doing the lock-in party on March 11th. DM tech or go to tigertoledo.com. By the way, Dawn, I need to put the lock-in party on my uh, in my global hub. Okay. To, to show people. Okay. But yeah, tap into those, you guys. Let never stop learning. That's why I put that uh, <laughs> I put that that quote from the video. I was like because you like, like entrepreneurs never stop learning, and that is true. Mm-hmm. But yeah, go ahead, uh, tech. Talk about that, Ron, man. Because I don't think a lot of people know what happened, what recently happened with Ron and how they restructured their business and their business model. <clears throat> so, hey, how you doing? With, regardless of what happens in terms of how you ultimately, how appointment ends up in your hands, whether you're on notarize.com or you're on uh, one notary.com or you're on another platform, Ultimately, what truly really matters is who got the client first. Because you might get a client that's in another part of the country, another part of the state, and I, if I got the client first, then what happens is that at this point on a remote platform, I then find a notary who can then execute the notarization. And if you do 10 of those a day, meaning you do 10 to 20 
13, let's say on a good day you did, let's say on a good day you did 15 notarizations. And how much is the notary platform paying you? It might be very, very good. It may be unaware, it, you, you, you may not know this, but when the notary who gets the client first, in this case, the platform, versus if you got the client first, you get paid $25. But if you got the client first, would that be any different? Do you think, do you think you would still get the $25? So if, so here's a shift in, in the approach, right? It's not necessarily wrong, or it's not necessarily, not necessarily better or worse. It's just that you acknowledge the difference. It's just that I attempt to see this from a different perspective. If I get the client first, and all of a sudden, it's technically worth my time. The problem I have is that if I'm getting $25 for every notarization, I'm doing 10 of these, $250, not bad. What if I were to get the 10 of those clients and they were my, not my own? So all of a sudden, this is no longer worth my time. I'm only getting paid $2 and I'm getting fewer and fewer appointments. It's, does that sound like what's happening? I used to get 15 hours to be booked all throughout the month. And now it's lucky if it's once a week. You like Ron. You like the security of it. The, you don't have to go outside the house. But let me challenge you to think, if I can get the client first, which is exactly what Google is thinking in responding to the chat GP with Microsoft, if we can get the client or if we can get the customer first or we can occupy that space first, all of a sudden, I, I now I running the business. Now I am approaching this like Notarize or like one notary or like any other platform out there approaching it. If I get the client first, I then dictate what happens. If you get the client first, then I accept what it is that you offer. Again, it's not better, nor is it worse, nor is it superior, nor inferior. It's just different. Mm. You can absolutely get the client. You can absolutely go. We just showed here, demonstrated. Where, what city do you live in? Oh, you live in Dallas. Okay, notary in Dallas. They just got the client first, that's all. Now, I don't, I'm not sure what's going to, what they're calling me about. I'm not sure, you know, if it's legal. I'm not sure. See, that, all those things, it's never going to be quite the same. All the scenarios is going to be different. Just get that right out of your mind. Focus on, on getting clients. So, so help me understand something. With Ron, because this is the reason why I didn't go for it. With Ron, isn't it similar, not the same, but similar to what happens with a signing service in that you're, you're logging into the platform because not every platform allows you to bring your own clients. So you're yeah, logging right. into the platform that you pay to be on. Okay, so you, you pay them to be on their platform. Then they tell you what you can or, or can't, or what's allowed to be charged. Um, I'm not sure if they are charging the client more than that or what, but to me, you know, now Notary Nation has an affiliate, Ron. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. So we have someone to handle that business <clears throat> so we're not losing, you know. But personally, I just, I didn't understand the benefit of, okay, yeah, I can stay at home. But if I have to sit at home and just wait for you to send me people so that you can pay me $25, what if I'm sitting there for four hours and I got one person or none? So help me. Um, is that correct? Or, or you know, I know no, some you're people right. let you bring. You're right. So, so get this. Ron was charging because they were at the top of the food chain, right? And, and they were brokering the deals. They would broker the deals for like $225. Always follow all the money, y'all. Always. They were broken, brokering the deal for 200 and up. 
The pen yeah, was coming down the them pan to, to the bottom. Yeah. And, and they would farm out the same way we do with the notary agency. The only difference is you guys get fucking shekels. Mm -hmm. You get you get you get crumbs and and they pay them out like twenty five dollars, but then they also tax you for using their software. Right. Yeah. So let's not forget that. We're gonna pay you twenty let's say we pay you twenty five dollars. But you're going to have to run some of that $25 back because you're using our software. And they come and not good with um, offering, some offer you your digital stamp. So now they, they're making more money off of you. Like, and sometimes notarized, they do not have the, the um, you would have to get a third party thing, which I'm sure they, they're an affiliate with, where you have to do a verification I thing. I heard about that too, yep. Right? Mm -hmm. So... As my brother would say, no Vaseline, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is you got to consider the time always, too, because, you know, oftentimes it could what would end up being in a 45-minute round trip, 15-minute sitting inside some, sitting someone's house, would you go in person? Well, put it this way. California never passed Ron. There are a couple of reasons why, but it's I'm, I'm interested, I'm fascinated as to thinking, why that gives you an advantage when really getting the client is ultimately what matters across the board. Focus on getting client doesn't matter if it's Ron, doesn't matter if it's a person, whether it's loan closing, doesn't matter if it's in a jail. Getting the client is really the focus there. But when Ron didn't pass in California, it, 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 it didn't have a chance, right? Didn't have a chance for other reasons. But I couldn't help but think to myself, if it did, it would have gave me another weapon because all I focused on getting the client it doesn't doesn't actually increase my ability to to get paid what I want to get paid. I would caution you to think or to lean or rely on Ron as another alternative to getting more, you know, appointments. Right? If loan closing slows down, then that's a result of partnership. But if all of a sudden you jump to another thing, another thing every time, thinking that there's more appointments there. I would caution you, focus really squarely on getting the client. And whether it's Ron or whether it's another fingerprinting, it'll come to you. It'll come to you. That's ultimately what's important because I might come to you and you might be able to offer me an in-person appointment. You might be able to offer it to me remotely. Yeah. How does it make sense in my life? It might make sense for me. But when you call me and, and you say, all right, well, I can do this. Put it this way. You call me and I tell you, well, I can do this remotely. And um, now all of a sudden, well, he might have wanted me to go to multiple different places. All of a sudden, I talk about myself out of a, an important, maybe even not, I'm not talking about the money. I'm just talking about you just negotiated a contract, a deal with a client using your business. All right, sir, you need it to be signed by your ex-wife, and you also need it to be dropped off at FedEx, and you need me to print it because your ex-wife doesn't have a uh, printer. But you know what? I can do it remotely, and I can just get it for a fraction, you know. And then when you get there, the guy doesn't have his ID correctly, and he doesn't get proper instructions on how to pass the, the you know, the, the, the knowledge-based answers. And, and it actually turns into a about what of what you would have done anyway <laughs> if you just did in person. I don't know. One of the things I hear is that when you have people, you know, um, people that are up in age, they have trouble getting in to conduct the run, even though, you know, initially they thought it would be better because, you know, it saves them from having to leap out of their home and, you know, they may have situations, right? But then when it comes time for them to get onto the platform to be able to do it, it takes up a lot of time because they just aren't computer savvy like that. So that's another thing, too, that, you know, I've been hearing um, in the streets about Ron. But the biggest thing that I heard about Ron as of recently was that they let go of a lot of their independent contractors and they started doing everything in-house. Right. Now... This would explain why your number of signings goes down. And Exactly. 
haven't stopped looking for notaries though. The, the, people haven't stopped looking for notaries. But, no. all, so but you know, also all three of those things. I'm not thinking it was six now you want can't do it for sixty five. Well yeah, yeah, well we're getting fewer order, orders, so we'll just give it to the people that will do it for sixty five. And right and now, all that's all cool. three of us are entrepreneurs, right? So I think that was a a great play. Because if if I hire, okay, let's say that a Ron takes about mm, 10, 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes to do, uh, uh, I'll say 10 minutes, and we are brokering all the deals. Let's say we hire uh, five people. In one hour, one, one employee can do six runs. Six runs, right? No customer service problems, nothing. No no, no call-ins, hey, the verification thing isn't working. No, you work for us, so you know the system better than anybody. So, so we have five of them, so we can burn out 30 runs in an hour. We're charging 200 and let's say we're charging $200 per run. So now the company makes what, 200 and, and they're doing like 30 runs. They're like six grand? No, right? Is that right? <laughs> Let me see. Well, yeah, 30 times. 30 times 200, yeah. That's $6,000 an hour. Why would you not make that all encumbrancing of the company at that point? Consolidation. Yeah, I, I think that was a brilliant play. Yeah. I would have done that too. Now you have, an employee, you have an employee or you have staff, they don't even need to work full time because I don't see anybody really doing runs at nine o'clock at night, <laughs> right? They can wait, wait. <laughs> especially when you have the number one platform when it comes to run as of the moment. So you get this done during business hours, they work 80 hours a week, they work 40 hours a week, or even part-time, five hours. The numbers don't lie. The numbers don't lie. So one employee on a, on a part-time base shift can turn out 30 runs by themselves. 30. I don't I don't, know, I don't know about you, but like when I was getting my ENO insurance, um, it was it was a Ron generated uh, notary stamp that was on my application. It was super simple. Matter of fact, I didn't even need to talk to anybody. I just put in my application. I think they asked for a picture or something like that. I sent that through. In 24 hours, they sent me back my application with my insurance, my surety bond, everything. And you never sat before a notary? No. Hmm. Uh, only, only when I was uh, signing the application, but, but for my surety bond, no. And that was actually, and that was notarized. They actually notarized. Uh, the it, the surety bond section of the application, mm -hmm. but I needed another notary to to sign off that they verified my signature. How much was it? Thirty bucks. Yeah. And they do it nationwide. Okay. How'd you find them? I just looked them up. I just googled them. Wow. Yep. So, I don't know, man. Like, 
<clears throat> What's going to happen with this AI uh, in the future? It, it, is the notary business in jeopardy? I don't think so. Not at all. No. I don't think so. Mm -mm. But we can definitely uh, use the software, though. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to use it in our way, right? Mm -hmm. and, it, and I can tell you it transcends way beyond being a notary. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. Um, oh, okay, I, I got a text today, and maybe you guys can help me help this, this client out. He's out there in Colorado, right? And I got this text this morning, and he said, hey, look, man, I went over to UPS, and then UPS said that they can notarize everything. I'm talking about power of attorney, last will and testament, you name it, loan modifications, everything. This is what they do in Colorado, right? He said they will do it for $5 and then it's $2 each additional signature. <laughs> <laughs> he said, how can I compete with that? Move. <laughs> Hey, Ty. Hi. Yeah, move. Because I don't, I don't see you being able to compete with that. Unless you're going to someone who can't get out, like assisted living where they're, they're stuck or, you know, someone who can't get to UPS. Exactly. Exactly. What about you, Ty? What, what, what would you say the, the best uh, way to attack something like that because right now the the person feels like oh man that like they feel down and out to be honest with you they feel like hey they they got the wind knocked out of them because ups is doing it for this price how is it possible that i can charge for this if it's, it's not the price the i mean if it's five bucks it's five bucks Understand you're not going to get everybody, not everybody. It would be dangerous to think that everybody, right? Because some people, they don't really know what a truly know what a notary is. They just know that they got to get somehow get this paper stamp. That's all. So who can do it the cheapest? I don't care when they can do it. Now, on the other hand, so accept that. Accept that. I can't, I can't help that person or... But this is what I would do. I would say, because people will say that. They'll say, oh, I'll just go to the UPS store. And they got it for cheaper. I'll say, all right, so do you need it now or do you need it later on? Or do you need it tomorrow? Or do you need it next week? Uh, I can wait. Okay, great. You're flexible with your time. Great, no problem. This is what we'll do instead. So I don't I I don't let people walk away. You call me, you call me for a reason. So I'm gonna help you. I don't let people walk away. Hell no. <laughs> I'm a headhunter, Tiger. You know this. Do you need it now or do you need it later on today? Uh, I, I guess. I guess talking way is not that important. Great. You're flexible with your time. Even better. This is what we'll do instead. Instead of you calling me at the, waking me up because I was busy talking to Tiger and you want to call me, talk about you need me to come right now, you don't really need me right now. In reality, you're flexible with your time. So instead of me coming, dropping everything from what I'm doing right now, I was playing with my kids, I was grocery shopping, or I was taking a shower. Instead of me coming right now at 1 30, I'll come in an hour. Or I'll come in 50 minutes. Or I'll come in later this evening. Just give them another option. That's it, right? So he says, Oh, they can go to you. I can go to you best store, get it for cheap. Okay, great. Do you need it now? Or do you need it later on? I say, well, I can wait. All right, great. You don't need it right now. This is what my option is. I'll let's do it later. Let's do it tomorrow. So I say, My staff, or I say, My assistant in that moment, They'll reach out to you with some next available times. Since you're flexible, you can save 50 bucks. Because clearly when you say, I can go to your store for $5. All right, so it's um, it's about the price, but it's not about the price. You just don't know what it is that I offer you. You don't know, understand that. I right, so you say, oh, oh, okay, great. And I say, do you need the document? You know, do you have the document already prepared to be signed and ready to be signed? You know, um, no, I actually have it in my email. I say, great. Well, we can 
you can forward the document to us. My staff will print it for you, and we can save you some time as far as printing. Do you want to do it today or do you want to do it later on, right? I keep the person on the phone because I know it's not the price. It ain't the price, bro. You trying to get it for $5 or cheap? Okay, then go. Go to the corner store and get it you know, for five bucks. You might get there and then they look at you stupid. Like, why are you coming here with this stack of papers? They say they, they might do a power attorney and then they sign somebody's name off and didn't check the ID correctly. And then they get sued. They ain't going to be doing it no more. So... I can base it a person, bro. All right, you say you can get it cheaper, no problem. And I and I don't say it like this, right? <laughs> I'm a little more polished, right? But I break him out. And this is all about, hey, you call me, you contact me for notary, right? I'm a notary. Let's help you out. Just because they say, oh, you charge too much, or I can get it there cheaper. Okay, great. Okay, all right. Hey, do you need it done still? Because at the end of the day, you still need it done. Then you realize, all right, this person is just playing around. So you just wasted 30 minutes talking to somebody trying to convince them, right? But at the same time, everybody who calls you, everybody who reaches out to you until you realize what it is that they have. Because you don't know what they have. They, you might get there and they have 50 documents. And then this client who's trying to get it for cheap, you talk to them into doing it for a little bit less. Thus keeping the client, you get there and it turns out, all right, you actually turn this turn to a big sale. Hey, hang on, you know. I'm talking hypothetical, you know. You know, you're not gonna get there. It's not gonna be like that drastic difference. But if it does, let's say he says I got two documents, and you get there is actually six, which is more realistic. Okay, great. I'm okay to pay you for the extra ones. Of course you are. <laughs> of course I know you are. So do you have a, a credit card or do you have cash? Right. Don't be worried about the, the scenario about. Listen, just focus on getting the client. Don't be worried about what can happen because the reality is it's going to be different every time. It's, every appointment is not going to be like the last appointment. I focus, get it on the client. You can do it. Focus on getting the client. Somebody called you says, I can go get it somewhere cheaper. I'm like, great. Okay. Do you, do you still need it done, don't you? you? Well, yeah. Okay, great. Do you have your ID? Yes, I confirm that. Great. Do you have the document already prepared to be signed or do you need us to print it? Oh, Bob, you're right. I actually do. I was going to go to the UPS store and hopefully they print it. Okay, I hope they don't charge you another printing fee because that $5 that you thought you were going to pay is now $10. Or you just went there and you drove down there and you got into a car crash. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm saying is, you're right, though. Um, Jazz also said uh, made a good point, too. She said that uh, a lot of the UPS, they don't even have uh, their notaries on staff like that. And that's true. Right. Colorado, but if in mm -hmm. Colorado, like the scenario that you gave, right, where they're just doing the same thing that a notary is going to do, I think they're running, it's just like uh, my partner Tyrone just texted me and said, you know, what about the risk of documents being executed right? Yeah. So True. if you're not doing it all day, every day, every you're a banker, yeah. you're, you're, a, you, you're a shipper, you work at UPS, you're not a notary. So exactly. they don't, they don't specialize. Mistake after mistake, you know. Absolutely. You're 100% you're, you're right because they do not specialize. They're basically just going to order take. They're going to say, hey, you got your documents, this is section, blah. They, they don't care about executing it uh, correctly. Um, and, and by the way, you guys, listen to these two. Listen to Tech and Dawn. The, tech will, is a killer. He probably got blood on his dick. I'm stereotyping right now. On the, I'm stereotyping on the West Coast. You probably got notary blood on your dick. Then Dawn, I don't know, she got x-ray vision. She can find the credit card, my dude. She know what kind of credit cards you have in your pocket. I know you have an American Express, sir. You sound like you have a blue one. <laughs> Let's get, come on. I'll, I'll take your payment over the phone. Let's run it. Let's go. These two are vicious when it comes to closing deal. Vicious. I would hate to call their business just as an inquiry. Straight up. I don't. I, I don't even. I wouldn't even want to tire kick their business. I, I might come out. With half a leg and shit. <laughs> I don't even need a notary. How did I wind up paying two hundred and fifty dollars? <laughs> well, 
well, we got to make up a document. She said, I already have a pocket. <laughs> it's fun, bro. It's more fun it like that. Bro. Because, listen, you don't change tires. You don't change oil. <laughs> you, you're you a notary. So, yes. bro, let's get this done. Let's, come on. Come on. Let's get this taken care of. You know, that's why you called me. Why are you on my phone playing? <laughs> yeah. You, where, where do you live? Come on, where do you live? Give it up. Bro. And then, and you... But people want that. They want you to help them because that's the one they told you. Yeah. Now, sometimes people don't need that. They need the sheriff, right? Sometimes people, or even better, because we're talking about AI, even better. <clears throat> My client, I'm, a, I'm an attorney in San Diego, and I have used you before, and I have another attorney friend because, you know, attorneys run with attorneys, and we run with other attorneys. <laughs> They need something signed on a Sunday at 2.30, and today's Wednesday. That notary that I used the last time, I love the fact that they communicated with me the whole th way throughout, and, and I didn't have to get interrogated when I asked them that I've got a client who's worth $80 million or whatever it is, and they didn't ask me if I was under duress or, you know. What? My attorney friend who needs this on Saturday, I don't even care what it, what it costs. It's the fact that if they can get it done. That's all I care about. That's all, all I care about. At the end of the day, sometimes people care about getting it for as cheap as possible at the UPS store who has a notary who ain't even a notary. They done signed. I mean, whatever, man. They gonna do it right. They gonna do it wrong. But I understand who people don't want that. They're like, listen, this is my grandkids' trust. Or uh, we paid the, the attorney $3,000 an hour for them to draft up. And also, we needed to get it updated. So I wouldn't dare take the CPS store. There are a lot of people, more people, I would argue, than the people who say, who can do this for as cheap as possible so that um, you know, I can get this little twenty-five dollars out this out this unclaimed money account. You know, because you know some marketing company found my name in a database that said I had my great great grandfather had an unclaimed check. You know, for twenty-five dollars. So let me just go ahead and get a UPS store because they only charge five dollars anyway. And I mean, I'm but so I can get a check that's twenty-five. I had a lady tell me that one. She was like, I told her, yeah, lady, we can help you out. You got ID? You got this? You're in this city, and it's you, Rick, 144. She's like, oh, oh. <laughs> And she says, why so much? I said, do you need it done today? She's like, no. I was like, great. We can do it tomorrow, or we can do it later on this evening when it's more convenient for you. You can save 25 bucks, be more flexible, because you call me with urgency. You call me on the phone screaming at me, talking about, I need a notary right now. I need to get this unclaimed money. So I'm responding, okay, I can come right now. But it's time, you don't need me right now, dude. I know, because you just, you're like, it ain't number $25. I can go get a new, go to the UPS store, do a pretend. I'm like, you should just went there then. You wanted me to drive across town to go to stamp your your release of unclaimed document money for you to get 25 bucks. You want me to charge you, what, five bucks? And and so, and, and I hate the people I can go to you if, if you knew that you could go to them, why did you call me? What exactly are you right. expecting? Right. What were you trying to accomplish? Were you were trying to get it less than a dollar? Like, for real? <laughs> you beat <hate> that? <laughs> the fuck, you know? Like, you that cheap. Well, I thought I'd get it for... And you thought I was going to drive to your house for free? <laughs> I promise you, I come to your house... I'm gonna. I'm going in your fridge. <laughs> I'm coming in. I'm going in your fridge. I'm drinking your kids' sunny delight. That leftover Chinese food. I'm taking that with. I'm, I'm leaving with something, fam. Like you, it's not even possible. <laughs> That's the crazy part. <laughs> It's the, it's the crazy part because using the AI, it's like, I know why you called me. Like, I know exactly why you called me. 
And that's why it's cool to have this stuff because you like, I knew exactly why you called me. You called me for a notary, didn't you? I know you did. <laughs> so let's get this taken care of. Yes, it's 145 bucks. It's 145 bucks. Yeah, because I'm coming to you. I'm doing exactly. And people are like, thank you. A lot of people do it automatically. They just want to know. Can you do? Uh, yeah, so so shout out to my man Martin out there in Colorado. I appreciate that. Um, you know, hopefully you watch this and you get something out of it. You're not competing with UPS, brother. You're not. That is not that is not your direct. That that's like that's like um, <clears throat> that's like Nordstrom saying that they're competing with Walmart's uh, section. Of graphic team, <laughs> like th th no, we don't compete with uh, the middle aisle next to the pharmacy and the five-hour energy drink inside of Walmart. That, that is not who we want to do war with. Exactly. So UPS and then Jasmine made a, a great point. She was like, a lot of people that do uh, items like power attorney, they're really not that mobile anyway. Mm. And then, so the clientele that you're going after, they're not looking to go to UPS.